Hey, welcome back to the Grotu Orlov Show. It's uh, January 22nd, 2022, in the year of our Lord, and it's episode 489. I think today we're going to do a more traditional bagging and boarding, organizing comics video. So, uh, uh, come along with me if you, uh, if you dare. All right, so let's see what we can do here. Here is a. Uh, just need a word for this. It's uh, Cheryl Blossom, number one. So anyway. I don't know. I guess it's valuable. I don't really care if it's valuable. It's, I don't collect uh, comics to make money from them. Um, let's see. I should send it off to CGC and have it slabbed. Boy, that would be fun. All right. So, let's put this over here. I'm going to file all the Archie comics over here. Okay. Here's Nightmare, the Galloping Ghost, and Casper, the Friendly Ghost. Where did I buy this at? I don't recognize that price uh, sticker. Okay. That probably should be rebagged and boarded, but at least it's got a bag on it. Right now I'm concentrating on things that aren't bagged and boarded at all. This came in last week, but it was damaged, um, so the store owner is going to uh, get another copy for me, and he just gave me this one as a reading copy. But I'll tell you, I need to get these books. I've been uh, stalling all three of these books that are available from, what is this, Tomorrow's? This is Tomorrow's, yeah. Yeah, really good publishing house. So I'm going to get these three books. My birthday's coming up April 20th. Yeah, this is a magazine that I get uh, um, for me every, whenever it comes out. Seems like it's every two, three months. It's all into the stuff that I'm into. But uh, this, this kind of damage is really unacceptable, Diamond. Diamond's been having some trouble lately. Uh, there's uh, a lot of delays in their books getting to stores. Um, so, I'm just, I've got all these books in different boxes, and they're not organized, and I'm trying to get them all into the boxes where they belong with all of the rest of their. Uh, here's a. Shoot the Submariner number 65. It needs to be with the rest of the Submariners. I think I may have several copies of this particular issue. No, no, not with him. He's all alone. Why he only came to Here's 60. So places everybody. It's coronation time. So those are all joined in welcoming the newcomer with the loudest greeting of them all. Happy New Year! Here's the Avengers 109. That tears it. I've had it as an Avenger right now, right here and now. Hawkeye's cutting out for a hit television show. I haven't watched a uh, 
any of that show yet. I, I've heard bad things about it, but it's really not even really about him. But, uh, oh, here's a book I uh, got recently for basically nothing from a guy that's homeless and has a trunk full of books that he's selling and I was trying to help him out. Uh, looks like this had been in a library. But it's, uh, oh shit. Looks like it might be missing a page. Anyway, it's a book about Dolly Parton. It's not a... So, I'm a fan of Dolly Parton. And so I, this book, I, I didn't know it existed, so I got this book. So, let's get this over here where it can be put with the books. Here's a bad condition copy of Charlton Bullseye. This is issue number three from September of 81. This is a tryout book. I believe it's trad, but maybe not, because it looks like this is an old. Okay, yeah, this is a trad book. This is someone trying to imitate Basil Wolverton's style. Um, so that's what I, I just saw these pages, and I thought, boy, is this a reprint? But. It's clear they're very meticulously trying to copy his style right down to the lettering. Yeah, that's a trial book. You don't, I don't see Charlton books anywhere very often, so I've had this for a while. Let's get it properly bagged. <sighs> so, it's a Saturday afternoon late morning. Actually, I know the time now. It's actually yeah, early afternoon. Look, I've got a clock. Isn't that amazing? I always complain about there being no time, no way to tell time up here. So I put that clock there. Amazing. I have several copies of this free comic book that was given away at the movie theater when the documentary Comic Book Confidential played. The management of this theater. And, uh, to me it was uh, something I thought would be amazing to have. So I've got several copies. careful what I bag. I only have a hundred bags right now. I need to get some more. Um, here is AC reprinting the Western art of Dick Ayers, the Presto Kid. So it's a magical cowboy. Yeah, so the, these, these books in the 90s reprinted this older stuff. It seems like most of the stuff I was buying in the 90s were books that reprinted older stuff from the 50s. And because the 90s wasn't a, like my favorite comic book time. But, you know, I was watching the guys that do 
did I already say this in the last episode? I was watching uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe, uh, was the name of the channel on YouTube, and uh, I think I started to tell this story, and I must have gotten sidetracked. But anyway, it's the guy that does Red Room, the comic book Red Room, and his friend is the guy that does these little, these retrospectives of Marvel comic characters. Anyway, they're very interesting. They interview people and talk about comic book history, and they were both teenagers or kids, kids in the 90s, so they're explaining what Rob Liefeld's art meant to them at the time, and I could see how a third grader would be mesmerized by that art and want to imitate it, And but, you know, as someone that was you know, about 30 or a little less than 30 years old at the time, and had grown up with John Romita and people like that, and John Buscema, you know, it's like seeing, seeing all that weird art was kind of a turn-off to me. This is a cool comic. Nobody knows it. Nobody collects it. Infinity Incorporated, even with, uh, um, and it's like, uh, well, this was, uh, the follow-up to All-Star Squadron that Roy Thomas was uh, writing for DC, but right when he was doing Infinity Incorporated, they pulled the rug out from him and did away with the alternate Earths, all the different multiple Earths, uh, by, you know, with Crisis on Infinite Earths, so that kind of uh, threw a monkey wrench into what he was doing. Um, I know that, yeah, Maybe this is where, you know, you know, I'm not really sure what they've done at DC in the last several decades, but I've really enjoyed, truly, genuinely enjoyed the television show Stargirl that started on that DC uh, app, and then it's now on HBO Max. I think it the second season aired on the CW Network, but don't because it's CW, don't think it's just garbage. It's very well done, and it's, there's really no political agenda that I see. It's a, it's a lot of fun, and it's like as much fun to me as watching an old Republic serial, and, and I, I, I loved it, and my wife loved it, and her mom liked it, and everyone that was come over and, and watched it with us has acknowledged this is great. Anyway, um, apparently Wildcat is now a young Hispanic girl and Dr. Midnight, these are the uh, the next generation. They didn't just change the character like they do now. This is their, their they hand the mantle down to the next generation. So I don't mind that when they just change the sex or race of a character for no reason, well, except for their political agenda, then that's annoying, but I don't mind a next generation, a different character being that, but anyway, so, uh, and then, uh, yeah, the Dr. Midnight is this uh, young uh, African-American girl, but uh, in this comic, uh, if you're into Todd McFarlane, he started in not in this particular issue, but in, he was working at Infinity. And maybe that's not where he started, but he was doing this Infinity Incorporated comic before he did uh, all that Spider-Man, Spawn, Demon Goblin stuff, and uh, uh, before he did uh, uh, not Spawn, Venom. I get I say spawn when I mean venom because to me it's all the same thing. It's like venom is just spawn is just venom with a cloak on to me. I don't know any of that crap. This is uh in the 80s I bought my lights and I would put all my more, my comics that I could in my lights, but back then they, people didn't really have boards, didn't put boards in comics. So anyway, this comic's in a my light, and it looks really nice. I just don't have a board with it. Look at this Dave Stevens era. 
I mean, th that was the artist in the 90s that I was amazed by. You look at his art. This is Dave Stevens. Big tra It's a real shame that he passed away so young. This is from, if you look, the signature there is from 1980. Well, 87. I guess it was more the 80s. Dave Stevens Prime. And he's the guy that brought back into public consciousness uh, Betty Page by using her uh, as a, basically as the love interest a, a real life pinup model that posed for dirty magazines in the 50s and early 60s he had ton collected tons of pictures of her so he used those pictures as a reference to make the girlfriend of the Rocketeer and even called her Betty and then people loved the comic and then they realized oh this is a real person so people started collecting me I really collected lots of old men's magazines with Betty Page and people found the photo one of the photographers Bunny Yeager that took a lot of pictures of her in Miami as a jungle girl or out on the beach and then they contacted Movie Star News which was still a company that sold photographs of movie stars in New York the original photographer Irving Claw that took all these 8mm films of Betty Page and photographs of her tied up in bondage which was very uh, shocking at the at, back then uh, he had passed away, but his sister was still running the company, and people start, started ordering lots of pictures from Movie Star News and getting VHS copies of the old 8mm uh, films. And uh, Dave Stevens, oh, Greg Theakston put out a little digest magazine called The Betty Pages. And before long, before too many years passed, Betty Page was discovered. You know, it was like a mystery what had become of her, and so she at least got a taste of the love that people had for her and her wonderful personality and and everything before she passed away so that's a story of that but dave stevens kind of uh, it was instrumental in in that uh, he was married to brink stevens that uh one of the screen early screen queens here's myron moose funnies I'll put this in. This is kind of. It's this is not a dirty underground, but it's an underground. Or I'll put it with the undergrounds. Uh, when I put things over here, that means I'm taking them into the other room to file them properly. There's another copy of uh, Myron Moose Funnies. The New Year brimming with happiness. Yes, 2022. I'm brimming with happiness myself. Let's see. Here is um, the Rocketeer in Comics interview. There's the Betty Page character. So it looks like I've got some copies of the Comics interview dealing with that movie coming out. Let's put those over here. Oh boy. There's some cool stuff here. Look at this. Uh, Richard Corbin's always been one of my favorite artists. There's just something magical about looking at his art. Um, now this is non-airbrushed, but when, he was a master of the airbrush. Um, I thought I had a stack of boards. I'll worry about that later. Let me just put that over here. Look at this. Um, made like a hot stuff comic Hellboy Jr. Halloween special look at this Bill Ray art but it's uh, not just there look at this it's a uh, wrap around this would be worthy of framing okay I'm definitely gonna let's see what's the art inside like yeah, this this is a book that you should seek out. The interior art is great as well. You know, most comics today they'll have a really cool cover, and then you look inside and it's nothing. But see, they're really going for the whole Harvey angle here, and quite delightful.
Hellboy is a far more interesting character to me than Spawn. Although I, I don't really follow Spawn. I never really read it that much. So, you know, I'm just going off half-cocked. I don't mean to offend you. I've never really read it. I have some early issues with Spawn. I bought a few action figures in the 90s because they look cool. That Angela, which I think is now a character at Marvel. Uh, the, yeah, I guess it's okay. There's a new, uh, there, there's some comic out now I saw with a, like a female Spawn type character that came out a few days ago. That looked pretty cool. There's a, that character looks cool at least, but I don't need to get into collecting something else. Maybe it's great. Only problem when you do this tapeless uh, bags, then that little strip you pull off, that stuff gets everywhere, as static cling, it gets, a, you know, it's just all hard to get rid of it. Is this what we just looked at, or do I have two co I must have two copies of this. Okay. Oh, this is sent to me by Micah. This is sent to me by Graphic Man. I was wondering, because it's in a type of... Um, yeah, he sent me an AOK -okay back... You know, that's how I first met him, I think. Way back uh, over a year ago. Because he's got this, you know, in the back, which shows... Uh, oh, wow, that's interesting. So he has... Uh, it shows it's from his collection. It shows it's for some computer program he's got. It's really neat. This looks like an EC cover. I mean, it really does have the coloring, the look of an EC. Let me show you what I mean. You know what I mean, but some of you might be unaware of what EC looks like. I don't doubt you would be. Um... Because I've got some EC framed covers here because I bought a stack of old damaged comics and in there were several, just, just the covers of EC comics. So I put them in some frames and, uh, but you see the coloring of these comics. Yeah, so we're thinking of moving, so all this is going to have to be, uh, transported magically somewhere else we will I will keep you posted on that whole process but, um, this seems like a pivotal time in the history of mankind and it may be a time where it's might be good to get out of Dodge as it were so thank you once again Micah for this copy of the House of Secrets number 113 um, here's the Hulk 183 here's Hulk 153 and you know, I may have two copies. I just saw this in another box, Hulk 156. Now this has just recently become a sought after issue because um, in the new Ant-Man movie, Bill Murray is supposed to play a character that was in this issue this issue only he premiered in this character in this issue of the comic and died in this issue some character in the microverse or something so that's uh, something i was wondering do i have that copy it looks familiar well apparently i do now that i get into my collection here this is weird this is a donald duck adventures but I don't know if you can tell, it has no gloss. It's printed on what 
feels like interior comic book paper. Um, I don't know why they would do that. Is it a freebie? No, they charged a dollar fifty for this, but it is not. Why would they do that? It feels like recycled paper. You know, it's uh, weird. Yes, indeed. Well, I did an episode yesterday. I did one today. I said I'm going to start being more prolific with these shows. And, um, right now we've got 322 subscribers, which is... I said my wife told me that's a cool number. It's apparently... I looked it up. Wikipedia. It's um, Order 322 is the uh, Skull and Bone Society at Yale, right? That were... But the Bushes were members and all these, so it's, you know, scary, it's a scary secret society that you're not supposed to know about. They have 322, I think, written on a skull, and they, they, th they know. Anyway, you can watch all the conspiracy theories and all that stuff about that. Or conspiracy fact, probably. This copy, I guess this is when they restarted Death Rattle. It looks like they must have started it because I have Death Rattle number one and it doesn't look like that. So this must be a new version of it. Of course, Hate is a great comic. You should probably know that. <sighs> Hanna-Barbera presents all new comics. It, I think this was... Uh, Harvey had gotten the rights to Hanna-Barbera, and this is a preview of what their new comics were going to be like. This is a very thin comic. But then it turned out they didn't have, I don't know, maybe the rights, I think, went to D.C. or somebody else. So anyway, that's just a one-shot, the only time that Harvey did the Hanna-Barbera characters. I think I'm correct. But you can tell me in the, con uh, the comments down below if I'm inaccurate on that. Um... And by the way, it's subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you uh, hit like, whatever you want to do. Um, it would... I guess it doesn't matter. It would be cool if... Jeez. Uh, it would be cool if I could get over a thousand subscribers. You know, it isn't going to happen. There's William Stout art. A little bit naughty looking. This is Comics Interview. It has a interview with William Stout, interview with uh, Matt Groening. I don't think people collect these magazines, so they're and they're good reading, so I would recommend them. Uh, Comics Journal is a wonderful magazine. Uh, I used to read that all the time. I don't know if it's still published or not. If it is, it's not carried by my local stores. But uh, the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel on YouTube, uh, that, they find old stuff from the Comics Journal and expound upon it. Like uh, Harlan Ellison. There was an interview with Harlan Ellison in the Comics Journal where he was talking about Michael Fleischer who did the Spectre in the early 70s for DC and the Jonah Hex comics. And, you know, the comics were bloody and kind of warped. But uh, Michael Fleischer said he's just, he's like bug bug nuts, bug fuck crazy. And, but he was complimenting him. He meant he's crazy like the Lovecraft and Robert E. Howard were. He was complimenting him for being like, like those guys. But Michael Fleischer thought it was an insult because he had had trouble with... Uh, he had had issues where he'd had to seek, seek counseling. He, it was a sensitive sore spot for him, so he wound up suing. And uh, he, they brought in Jim Shooter into the trial, who was the editor-in-chief at the time of Marvel Comics. And the idea was Jim Shooter would say, Yes, I was aware of what was said in that comics journal magazine and it made me not want to hire him it made me less likely to hire him because i i read that he was crazy and and so they were trying to that's it, fleischer's lawyers were trying to show that and so um 
Anyway, so Jim Shooter talks for a long time under oath about Marvel Comics and how it runs. And, uh, and so on the Carnist, cartoonist kayfabe channel, they act out the trial. The, you know, one of them reads the, law, the, uh, the attorney and one of them reads Jim Shooter's part. And then they've been doing this like one episode a week, all the testimony, and it's very fascinating. That's a channel very uh, well worthy of subscribing to. Anyway, what else do I have here? Oh, look at that. Isn't that great? Boris Karloff, I'm covering up his face. I showed you that already. Oh, here's a bunch of books that need to be bagged and boarded. What do we have here? Okay. Marvel feature number two. This doesn't really need a new bag. It just needs a board. Let's take a look at it. Of course, you got Evil Knievel, who was a huge idol for kids in the 70s. Of course, he later took a baseball bat to a reporter. He didn't like being asked questions in a parking lot, so when a guy starts beating up reporters with a baseball bat in the parking lot, it makes it a little harder for to sell toys. And, uh, Yeah, this was this was fantastic. This is how Red Sonia should be done. I was talking about this yesterday, I believe. Um, that these new um, these this company that does Red Sonia now, Dynamite. They don't do her justice. I don't believe. Um, and it's a weird thing because I, I don't I don't know if Roy Thomas is getting pro proper credit for basically inventing Red Sonia because Robert E. Howard all he did was come up with the name the Red Sonia I believe was a Russian character f from the 17th century or something she, she was not a warrior that was contemporary with Conan or a chainmail bikini. That was Roy Thomas just taking that name and creating a, a cool character. So I guess whatever characters were created by Marvel in the 70s, every change you make to it was owned by the Robert E. Howard estate. So... So now Red Sonja is done by Dynamite, but Conan's back at uh, Marvel. But then there's some other companies doing basically Conan books, but they can't call it Conan on the front cover. So I guess Conan has now lapsed partially into public domain, some of the Conan stories. So you can adapt a Conan story, but you can't put the name on the cover. You can. I've seen some comics like that. Where's my tape? You know, I, I scrambled and put everything, got everything put up for this. And I, I got the, the mattress blown up for my friend, Gerald, who comes and visits every Friday night. He calls me yesterday afternoon. He says, hey, I'm really sick. I can't come over. And I said, well, what are the symptoms? And he described all the symptoms of, uh, you know, the big the thing that everyone's getting and they did promise that by March everybody will have had it I haven't gotten it yet as far as I know unless I was asymptomatic but 
Um, I know more and more people that I, I, I personally know, seven, eight people. Um, four or five of them that I come into contact with almost every day that have had it recently. So, so far I've dodged that bullet. But, oh, this is bad for my back. Hold on. Let me move this box up. I'm, I, anyway, I effed I myself up yesterday, moving all these long boxes into the other room right before yesterday's episode. Because later on, I was like, oh, suddenly I would have a flare-up at the base of my back. Or, so, uh, yeah, long boxes suck, man. But converting from long boxes to short boxes, that's gonna uh, that's gonna cause pain too, and pain in the pocketbook. And then I, I told you yesterday I got a letter in the mail that my retirement check is now going to be um, like about sixty dollars less per month. So. That's good news because the taxes have changed. Because um, president, the president promised after he was when he was elected, they would raise the taxes on billionaires. And uh, clearly, Gratorloff is a billionaire. Huh? Yeah. It looks like at some point, I must have paid six dollars for this at Duncanville Books because it says twelve dollars, and I believe that that red dot means it's half price. So this has gone this has gone up in value a lot recently. I've seen people on uh, on the internet talking about how valuable it is now. Yeah. Here's my uh, copy of Marvel Premiere number three. I'm sure that's gone up too. Okay, this one, the bag and board is fine. It just needs to be sealed. So I've got my official Gratu tape dispenser. Let's get this. Uh, let's start getting this comic collection in better condition. And uh, which is what I've been doing the whole time on this channel, which is now about two and a half years old. See, I've got copies of this in other boxes, and I think this is the main box. I need to get everything else in here, and then, only then will I know what I've got as far as these collections. Um... So... Marvel Premiere. Oh, wait, this is not in proper order. What? Two, three, six. Here's number eight. This is one of those old 1980s Mylar. Yeah, I gotta get everything in a Mylar. It, 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 it really does uh, seem to last. I guess I gotta win the lottery. You know, all the money I could have used for Mylar um, is going to t uh, my taxes being raised. Isn't that wonderful? It's funny when billionaires tell you, oh, we're just gonna tax the billionaires. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna tax yourselves. Yeah, pull, pull the other one. Where did I get that? I think I got that from Monty Python, didn't I? It was not the Holy Grail. Pull the other one. Is that pull my other leg. I guess I have two copies of number eight. Here's number nine. Oh, 
speaking of number nine, uh, I need to check to see if Comic Crypt of Castle Hills has put up any new videos. Um, and set the. Uh, because whenever, you know, number nine, then he, he goes into Beatles mode and number nine, number nine. I don't want to imitate his, uh, his shtick. But I almost did it. Okay. Here's number 11. Con they just don't make comics like this anymore. Oh, wow. I got two copies. I don't do that intentionally, usually. Um. I mean, not brand X. I'll pick that up whenever I see it, and, and I wind up a bunch of copies, but I don't really mean to do this. Um, this is one that I it's uh, I can tear the strip off, and I just never did it. There's a place we're interested in moving to. This old drive-in uh, promo saying, go to church. It's like... Uh, in between two churches, <laughs> so we gotta pick which church to go to. Uh, uh, here's 13, Marvel premiere. Look at this, another copy of number 13. And then what is this here? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm missing a bunch of it's, the other stuff is in other boxes. Soon, all will be reunited. Marvel Premiere 13. Two copies. Okay, then Liberty Legion. Is in a mylar, it just needs a board. And I think I have two copies of this Liberty Legion issue. Uh, there's another one floating around here somewhere. It never really went anywhere, it was meant to be kind of a Teen Titans version of the Invaders, right? Like the kid version of the Invaders. Tape? Oh. Yeah, yesterday. <laughs> Thank you, uh movie world for pointing out a typo I think I'd already caught it uh, I was typing out the uh, name of yesterday's episode while walking on the stairs which is not a really smart thing to do I was actually walking down the stairs while I was typing and I, I typed in Gratu Irloff and then I had like three or four typos in that title I finally I think fixed them all Yes, indeed. Marvel presents Guardians of the Galaxy. Hold on. Let me show you stuff that's actually this. Here's a Fantastic Four reprint title, Marvel's Greatest Comics. Marvel's Greatest Comics in the when I first discovered the Fantastic Four this is how I was reading the old uh, 60s stories um, see so, um, this is um oh shit this box is in the way of so it's a fantastic way to um, read the old stories oh look at that it's an ad for when they brought Savage Tales back. I remember that ad. When it comes to candy, I'll bet every young oh, man has a secret wish to own a candy wow. store. Filled to his heart's desire with smooth, rich chocolate. He's got a lot of teeth, man. Chewy Sandman. Well, whatever your favorite is, you'll find the refreshment centers a heaven of delectable candy just waiting for you to take your pick. So treat yourself to some delicious candy 
from the refreshment center. There's time between shows. Stop in right now. Everywhere I go, I hear that song by America. Uh, it talks about the Sandman. And uh, it's like, uh, I think the music today is so bad that uh, kids, the 20s, early 30s crowd, are seeking out the older music. Because I went in a Target and I heard Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen and uh, Mr. Blue Sky by uh, Electric Light Orchestra. Then I went in an antique mall and heard the same two songs. And then a comic store and I heard the same two songs last week. And I'm thinking, well, I, I, I know that the Electric Light Orchestra song was popularized by Guardians of the Galaxy 2, but I think, oh, in every trailer I saw before when we went to the theater to see the last Spider-Man movie, every single trailer had a song from the 60s or 70s as the it's it's like that's the new thing you got to pick a song that's already that people already like and you cut your trailer to that old song that's like you watch every trailer has that um it's a new thing why this stuff is not what i have more marvel premiere here at the back what? This is all out of order. There's another Liberty Legion. Oh, all this stuff is not... What? Did I, did I show you this one, number 12? It's not taped. Okay. Marvel Premiere 11... Yes, yeah, so that means I have two copies now of number 12. And here's another Liberty Legion. That's clearly a Kirby cover. Uh, number 30. Inside, it's written by Roy Thomas and uh, illustrated by Don Heck. Which is a better name than Don Shit or Don Goddamn or Don Fuck? Heck is a kind of okay word to say, heck. But there was a friend of mine in high school. He was kind of a friend. He was more kind of an annoying acquaintance. <laughs> he, had, he was like this perfect blonde-haired angelic choir boy type guy and he was very religious and there's nothing wrong with that but if you would say golly or not that I probably said golly that much or gee he would be offended by that in the lunch line he would say you know that is just a substitute for the Lord's name and you're actually saying the Lord's name in vain and I guess he's really right when you say gee it's really you're really saying you know, you're really saying Jesus, and you say golly, you're really saying God, or you say gosh, it's just, these are just substitutes. But he would, I wonder what became of him. I can't even remember his name. I have to look in the, uh, my old yearbook, but yeah, he was, he was something else. He was like the Simpsons neighbor, you know, Flanders. Uh, very, uh, yeah, gee whiz, it's like Jesus, if you think about it. Uh, um, W.C. Fields did, did it cool. He'd say, God free Daniels. Just everyone knew that was, he was saying, God damn. You know? <laughs> but he got, got past the haze code, past the censor. Okay, so I've got that. So now, see, I'm already just within the same box I'm fixing errors. But then all these other boxes have stuff that needs to be in this box, so it's this will be a process that will take many generations. I don't know if I have that much longer. Um, let's see. Yes, Marvel premiere number 32, Monarch Star Stalker. This is a character nobody remembers, but uh, 
Oh, let's get speculation going. Why don't you guys all start talking about Monarch Star Stalker on your uh, channel? It will. This will just be our inside joke. And maybe we can get Comic Tom talking about how I hear Monarch Star Stalker. People on the internet are talking about it's going to be made into a film. <laughs> Monarch Star Stalker. This is from uh, Glasses are I can't focus. Nineteen six October seventy six. October seventy six. Okay. That's a good what? Maybe, maybe eight months before Star Wars. Um, one of these ads, shit, for these toys. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, if they were aware that Luke Skywalker was coming in a few months. But, uh, Monarch Star Stalker. Art and story, Howard Shaken, who um, who did the art for Star Wars. Yeah, he probably knew about it. He's probably already been approached to do the art and story for Star Wars. But yeah, one arc of Star Stalker. Maybe James Gunn will out of left field put him in the new Guardians, one of these Guardians movies. Uh, so, um, have you been watching the Peacemaker TV series? It's quite, quite an experience. <laughs> uh, my wife and I have decided we like it. We were trying to watch. I get so damn tired at night. I, I got through most of the fourth episode last night, but then I realized I was nodding off, not out of boredom, just out of sheer tiredness. And I said, hey. Well, it's just, it's, you know, I can't, I can't keep going, so we went, so we went to sleep. Here's another copy of number 13. Uh, I guess I, I buy these because I'm not sure I own them, and they're so amazing. Like, over the decades, I have bought these several times. Um, let's see how many copies I have of 13. 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, three copies of 13. Here's a uh, Marvel Premiere 34, The Mark of Cain. Solomon Cain, Robert E. Howard character. And this is a. Uh, also, Howard Chaikin doing the art, and Roy Thomas the writing. Of course, Roy Thomas was very much associated with the Robert E. Howard adaptations of Marvel. I just got horrible heartburn. We ate some really weird uh, food last night. There's something called truffle fries. It was the most pungent smell. I almost puked, seriously. We got it at Chop House Burger, which was a place we ate at for a long time. And then they moved to the other side of town. They were just like half a block from here. And then that restaurant, two restaurants went in there and one of them was killed by the stuff floating around. It just never came back. And then lo and behold, a few days ago, Chop House came back to its original location, and they have really good burgers and fries, but we got some exotic fries called truffle fries, and the burger I got was a little too exotic for me. I think uh, I'll eat something more uh, pedestrian next time. Okay. What else? Another copy of <laughs> Shiza. Another copy of Di uh, Marvel Premiere number twelve. 
I just can't, I guess I can't help myself. This is just such a wonderful era and such a wonderful team working on this book. Here's Marvel Premiere number 41. This was a Star Trek knockoff, but as I recall, it was a, a fun read. I kind of enjoyed it. It's my uh, memory from age 12. Was it? Yeah, about age 12. But maybe I'm mixing this up with the one that DC did about the same time that was also a Star Wars uh, knockoff. That was called uh, what was that one called? Star Hunters. Yeah, there was Star Hunters and there was Seeker 3000 because neither Marvel or DC had the Star Trek license. It was over at Gold Key. But then Marvel got the Star Trek license and uh, this was forgotten. DC later got the Star Trek license. Uh, I preferred the Gold Key Star Trek books myself. Because they were... They started... That, lot, that Gold Key book started contemporary with the television show being on the air. And even though it was... Uh, nuts, you know, like flames shooting out of the back of the Enterprise like it was a hot rod in space. And um, what else did it do? You know, it's like uh, Mr. Spock saying, uh, have you ever heard of a black hole? And Captain Kirk would say, no, I haven't. Please explain. It's like, what? You're a captain of the, the Enterprise you know what a black hole is, huh? Here's a Marvel premiere with Man Wolf as a barbarian character. That's the way to. Uh, if the character's not popular. Maybe you can just turn him into a like a barbarian warrior. So they, they you know did that with more than a few characters. Um, even characters are popular. The Hulk and the Thing later. Uh, became barbarian fighters on other planets for a while. I guess they just thought it would take it to the next level. Because Conan was very popular at Marvel there for a while. I mean, very much so. Um, then the, the movie, the Schwarzenegger movie came out, and the comic didn't seem to be that good after that, but... It didn't. It seemed all. I'm sure it was still popular, but after a while, it just seemed to peter out. And uh, okay. uh, Marvel premiere featuring the 3D Man. This is a 1950s uh, character. Well, it's not a character from the 50s. It's a character that takes place in the 50s. Um, during the 3D craze. Hey, you know, did you notice that the 3D craze died out and like every movie was in 3D at the movie theater and they were marketing 3D Blu-ray players and suddenly, just, you know, just quietly, with little fanfare, whimpered away. Um, IMAX is still a big thing, but the 3D thing seemed to disappear between Homecoming and whatever this new Spider-Man movie is called. What is this last one called? No, no Way Home? Something like that. Um, all right. premieres. Oh, I loved this one as a kid. Weird World. 
It was uh, Mike Plug and Alex Nino, Doug Minch. I guess it's Minch. I used as a kid. I thought it was Mo Inch, but what do I know? It's a wonderful Mike Plug basically doing J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, they're little elf-looking hobbit guys, but. And then later, these characters reappeared in Marvel Fanfare. Oh, they actually got a color magazine for a while called, like, Warriors of the Shadow Realm or something. That It was a deluxe magazine with color, bright colors, uh, kind of like Marvel did with the Kiss comic magazine. And they did that, uh, they did a Conan color magazine, too. But then they... They were hoping to make this into a big deal. It's um, it's it's fun to read as a kid. This is before the um, Ralph Bashy Lord of the Rings movie, and it's before anything uh, got adapted. Well, seventy-seven. It's about when uh, the Rankin Bass Hobbit. TV movie aired, I think. Two, three, four, three, six, thirty-eight. Ooh, look at these. Ooh, yeah. How about this? Werewolf by Night. This isn't technically the first appearance because I think. It was uh, some 50s Atlas comic had a, a story, Werewolf by Night, which would technically be the first appearance, I guess. Yeah, I bought these comics when I was a kid because I love the, the monster stuff. But see, this one needs a backing board. It's got a very nice Mylite bag. So, put a board in there. Nice conversation, my wife and I, with our friend R.R. And uh, I want him to come on here as a guest to talk about music and com Shiza. Music. But what, am, what am I fucking doing? Not taking the tape off when I'm dealing with. Uh, I'm going to use that board. I'm dealing with a very valuable comic, probably more valuable than I realize, I assume. And I'm like not even taking the tape off like a fucking rookie. Sometimes you're on camera and you do stupid things. All right. Anyway, he's uh knows a lot about music and a lot about comics and a lot about all the culture that this channel represents. This is uh, uh, it's easy to say this isn't a comic book channel. I pretty much only show comic books on this channel. But this channel is really intended to be uh, about pop culture and, and specifically the pop culture the, the ephemera Ephemera is a fancy word that means stuff that wasn't meant to be saved. Or, or, but basically the stuff that your parents or your mom threw away because it was junk or it was evil or whatever, that's kind of what this channel's about. But I mainly deal with comic books. But he, he my friend R.R. knows all about um, old garage rock and rockabilly and... Uh, he collects records, and he was a comic collector, and he knows about everything. Yeah. Here's another copy of the same book. Okay, do I have the next one? Oh, what a great cover. If you look at the faces, if you look at the face of that girl, do you see the Will Eisner in that face? Because Plug was a... An assistant to Will Eisner. I got two copies of it. How about that? <laughs> oh. 
I think this is, is a sought after issue. <laughs> I bought this off the 7 Eleven spinner rack in Hampton, Virginia. I walked down the street and bought it myself. Because uh, I, I love monster stuff. I wasn't buying superhero stuff. I was only buying. I was buying this Marvel horror stuff. I was buying House of Mystery. Oh, I really like Ghosts, the DC comic Ghosts. And I was buying Dennis the Menace. And when I could, I was trying to get Warren magazines. But I had my mom as a gatekeeper. I had to show her those magazines. And if she approved, she'd let me buy them. And that wasn't very often. Here's number seven. This next one, I remember getting at the base exchange. I wonder, I almost I wonder if it has a Mark Jewelers insert in it. Wait, because that's eight, and then, then it jumps to 12. Why don't I have nine, 10, and 11? They're probably in another box. This is Son of Satan. Which I contend is based on a, the idea to do a Son of Satan character with the pentagram on his chest instead of like the Superman to S. Um, there was a, a really amazing magazine called National Lampoon. I mean, oh, I need to put it back and forth in this. And they did a a comic book that was kind of more a parody of Thor, but uh, it was called Son O' God, and uh, it was, Jesus was a superhero, and they had Neil Adams draw it, so it looked like a real comic, it had fake ads in it, it was just, they did several, they did it several times in National Lampoon, and I think someone at Marvel saw that, Neil Adams, because you know that, Neil Adams was a big deal. When Neil Adams drew something, uh, people in the industry paid attention. And I think they, they thought, well, son of God, why don't we do son of Satan? Because it was the same thing. He had, a, I think, a cross as a superhero symbol on his chest. I know it's sacrilegious, but it was funny. I, I don't know. I don't think it would have been. He was going up against, you know, the evil Pharisees, kind of bad people. I don't know. I mean, would Jesus laugh at it? Or would he? I, I tend to think God and Jesus have a sense of humor. They'd have to have a sense of humor, I would think. Um, so uh, when I look in the mirror, I realize they had a sense of humor. So, yeah, I mean, I, I hopefully they won't get mad at me when I come before St. Peter for reading National Lampoon. <laughs> Just this, the idea that this superhero once existed is funny as hell. And <laughs> that funny as hell, no, no pun intended. What is interesting is, you know, genuine people that worship the devil, that are running our government, like Hillary Clinton and Biden. Uh, notice how he always says, listen to him in the speech, he always says, I'm going to work like the devil to do this, or we're going to work like the devil. He, he always makes these reference. I know it's an old-fashioned expression, but, you know. Anyway, he's a wonderful president. I, I'm just kidding with you. Don't worry about it. Don't don't unsubscribe. He's wonderful. He's doing a great job. I like how he raised my taxes. That was nice of him. Because those I, I don't deserve the money. It, it, someone else needs it far more than me. Clearly. I'm as fat as I am, obviously I'm misspending my money. I remember like yesterday buying this issue in San Antonio. Lots of devil stuff coming out back then, mainly because of the exorcist, you know. This just needs a backing port.
but I got a hundred bags and a hundred boards. Now I'm going to have a lot more bags than I have boards because I'm putting boards in these old bags. And, uh, so I'm going to have to adjust accordingly. This is one of those cases where you actually are confronted with math in the real world. You always wondered when you were a kid, why am I learning math? I'm never going to use all these problems in my life. And maybe in a case like this, I might. But 13, 14. Oh, there's lots of books here. Oh, I need to move these Marvel Tales to this. I was putting all my Marvel Tales in a box that has Spider-Man on the outside of it. So it looks like I have three copies of Marvel Tales number 33. Let me pull those aside. Ooh, look at that. Double Dynamite. <laughs> it's just the first issue of Tomb of Dracula and Warlock appearing in Marvel Premiere. Number one. Yes, this was a good time. And this uh, is a reprint of classic John Romita Spider-Man. Although I understand they edit a panel, some panels, or take a page out when they do uh, these reprints, but this this is just how I, I, I as a kid, read these old uh, Spider-Man stories because I was born at the wrong time. I was born in '65 when probably this story was published. So uh, I needed to. Uh, of this stuff a few years later. Everyone likes popcorn, absolutely. And now mom and dad want a cup of good, satisfying coffee. That's the kind we serve, full of flavor and satisfaction. This felt like it had a Mark Jewelers insert in it. Because it just, but anyway. I love this time period where they had the window box, the frame, whatever you want to call it. There's a, a, the art is in a frame, and then sometimes the characters pop out of it. You see, like he's doing there. That's in the early 20 cent era. Oh, this record here, it was always advertised back then. You can get that on YouTube. You can hear the record. I've played it on this show in the background. There's old Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, advertising uh, Joe Wider's. Uh, bodybuilding program but the big guy was Charles Atlas he was the one that advertised the most in these old comics and I've seen old pulp magazines from like the 30s that had early versions of that same ad where the guy's getting sand kicked in his face and he swears that he'll get that bully someday on the beach it's the same basic ad, except you can tell from the swimsuits that they're wearing that this is like basically the 1920s. So that guy was doing that advertisement for a long time. Marvel Tales. Where is the... Oh, my back is fat. Anyway. Let's see if there's something interesting you want to... You came here to see collectible books, not issues of Marvel Tales that aren't that collectible. One 
Here's Marvel Chillers featuring Tigra, the Werewoman. I, uh, as a kid, I thought it was pronounced Tigra. So I've always pronounced it Tigra. But then later on, I realized, it, it, I think they meant Tigra. Why did I not catch that as a third or fourth grader? I don't know. Like, you see the word Armageddon in comics a lot. I thought it was pronounced Armageddon. And uh, stuff like that. Oh, yeah, you know, speaking of uh, almost saying curse words, but with the substitutes for curse words, remember that uh, the thing would go, Cripes! Um... would shout cripes. I'm talking like a 12-year-old girl. And then she would go this way. And then I went, and then she went, and I go. And it's like they use that as, a, instead of saying said, they say go. Maybe they don't do that anymore, I don't know. Um, here's another copy of that same issue. The other thing teenage girls seem to do a lot is add uh. Especially when they're exasperated to the end of a sentence. I don't want to go. Uh, I don't like that comic. Uh. <laughs> it's just, Noah. <laughs> I would say uh, Noah in the Ark. Yeah, because I used to be a teacher and. When I'd hear the uh stuff added at the sentences, I'd just start adding uh to the end of all my sentences, and they'd all start laughing, and they realized, oh, <laughs> I really do talk that way, don't I? Um, I wasn't making fun of them. It's just they laughed. Okay. Marvel Chillers featuring Tigra the Werewoman. This needs a board. It's got a nice mylar. You hear that sound of mylar? I, uh, I don't think... Well, these are called mylites. I, I've seen mylites today. I don't think they're like this. I don't... Yeah. Uh, a Silver Age board is not going to fit in this older uh, bag. So I would need some modern for these new comics that are real skinny I, I had to get some uh, boards for those I'm using I just use I basically just get silver age bags and boards for what I'm doing I'll just seal it back up and worry about this later but this one isn't sealed at all so I can put it in. I'm just putting it in these bags here. Comics just are not this good anymore. Although I hear the new She-Hulk is good. Eric Breen says that it's great. So I went the next day after he told me how great the because he said I, I didn't believe it. I just thought I'd try it. I read a few pages and it turned out to be really good. Uh, he was amazed so uh, I went and it was sold out so uh, I just go under the assumption that any new comic coming out from the big uh, companies is going to be you know woke and not fun to read another copy of the same issue rough on the back, man. Here 
Avengers. Oh, I've got a bunch of copies of number six. I would buy Tigra any... I love the the character Tigra. Looks like I got a lot of copies of that. Let's see what else I got. Marvel Double Feature. Marvel Spotlight on the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. They were only about 15 years late after the release of the movie, but the Golden Voyage of Sinbad had just come out, and Marvel uh, got was able to adapt Golden Voyage of Sinbad. So they went back and adapted the original Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, which was a movie that absolutely changed my life when I saw it one Saturday evening on uh, television in Hampton, Virginia. I could not believe how great that was, seeing that Cyclops with the, you know, cooking the guy while he's alive, licking his chops. I, uh, all through my elementary years after that, that was like in second grade when I saw that, I was always drawing the Cyclops this is number 25. And then numbers. Ooh, a big one's coming up. Marvel Spotlight on the Scarecrow. Not the DC Scarecrow. This is the Marvel Scarecrow. Anyway. The most mysterious superhero of all, the Scarecrow. Yes, indeed. Now 2.14 p.m. on January the 22nd, 2022. January 22nd, 2022. 22.22. And I have 322 subscribers on January 22nd, 2022. It's 2.14. So at 2.22, let's wait for a few minutes. It's going to be 2.22. It's going to be a cosmic moment. Maybe that's when the rapture will happen. I'd be cool to be raptured right on uh, YouTube. But I'm not doing a live stream, so I would never be able to... Uh... Um, this one's not worth very much. You could find this in every quarter bin. Not a very valuable comic. That's why I don't have it in a bag and board. Um, nobody really wants this comic, The Moon Knight. It's one of those uh, heroes that nobody cares about. But I'm going to put it in a bag and board just for grins. Yeah. Not a very valuable comic. I bought it when it came out. And, yeah. I bought it actually at Lone Star Comics. I remember buying this. In its original location that I it has now been not only knocked down, but the whole landscape where it existed is gone because they they have re bulldozed that whole area and it's now like a an incline going down into a stream. It's like I can't even walk on the spot where Lone Star used to be and say, Well that building used to be here. It's now uh the whole topography of the area has changed. 
Anyway. And then we got uh, the original Spider Woman. This is issue 32. Was there more than one Moon Knight? Was he just in one issue? Because I only have 28. I think I do. Here's a different Marvel spotlight. They started it over again with number one with Captain Marvel. It's a all new first collector's item issue. The stars, my battleground. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, this is the big hero, not Moon Knight, Dragon Lord. This is the one everyone wants, Dragon Lord. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's got uh, Steve Ditko art. Not just pencils, but inks. It's just art. When it says art, that means he did everything. Wow, it looks like it came right out of a Charlton Gorgo comic or something right out of the early 60s. Yeah. Dragon Lord. Ooh, and then Star Lord. Look how he's even got his arms out like he's Jesus. The saga begins. I used to think it was pronounced Saga, but I didn't know anything. Um, what's also interesting is how often the word Holocaust is used in old comic books in the 70s, which I tried to look up and, and like when was Holocaust first used as meaning the atrocity from World War II? Because it's interesting how words change meaning. Now if you say Holocaust it means one thing, but at the time in the 70s Holocaust just meant a huge disaster, a cataclysm. And it was used in the titles of a lot of comics. You know, like Thor would say, this hammer, this holocaust, or H is for holocaust, I think was on the cover of an Aquaman comic. And it's like, now that could never be done. So I think what happened, I, 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 you know, I look online to try to, no one's really written about this. I, so I think what happened is there was a miniseries called Holocaust about 1978 about the holocaust. And I think that that is when it was solidified as meaning that one event. This is uh, Steve Ditko, Captain Universe, number 10. Um, Bill Mantlow writing, wonderful Steve Ditko art. Next Saturday, Donald Trump is going to be uh, having a rally down in uh, Conroe, Texas, which is just north of Houston. So that'll be fun to watch. Oh, you know what? I bought this comic on my very first visit to Lone Star Comics when it first opened in the summer of 1977. I remember buying this comic. Wow, what memories. And it's 1950s reprints, and it was just wonderful to read this. Yeah. I'll probably get. That'll probably get me a copyright deal. Kermit's voice. Yeah. Yep. 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 Starting to get sore. Bagging and boarding comics is a young man's game. Well, what I need to do is have these bags and boards up higher because I keep reaching down for them and that's straining my back, which I already hurt yesterday moving those boxes. Anyway, Marvel Super Action number four. 
And then what is number five? Oh yeah, okay, so this was just a reprint title. See, it went to reprinting Captain America stories the next month. But, um, you know, wonderful stuff. And this is a reprint of Captain America 103. Well, maybe I should look for some, I mean, uh, showing you reprint comics are, is not probably the most entertaining thing. I won't get any new subscribers. Let me uh, see what else I can show you. Oh, there's some more Marvel premieres. In another box here. Let me pull this box up. Ouch. It's a beat up copy of this issue. Okay. Not really beat up copies. Okay. Here's uh, Morlock 2001. I want to get those in the other room with all my Atlas Seaboard books. It's a beat up Batman uh, special, no back cover. This is a U and a W box. Oh, here's a Warlock number six. Okay, these are books I've got to take to the other room. Flash. Because uh, I have the older books in the other room. Here's a... Uh, when a... Uh, this is a Whitman variant. They would cover up the issue number on these DCs when they did that. Um, okay. There's another Marvel Tales. Needs to go on there. That Spider Man box. Arr. Okay, I'll see what's in this box over here. I always like this cover. Unhand me, you, you thing. It's the thing, number 20. He goes off to another planet and becomes a space ranger and he comes back and becomes a wrestler, as I recall in this series. Very um, odd. And while he's gone, the She-Hulk takes his place in the Fantastic Four. That's my recollection. Could be wrong. Yeah, on that Carnist, cartoonist kayfabe channel, they were they were going over page by page this book, and they were explaining how this blew their minds as little kids. This was like the ultimate thing for them. So when it's explained to me that way, you know, if you were the right age when that came out, how amazing it was, then, then it all kind of makes sense. And then, if you want to stop pay TV and save free television, because, you know, when stuff like this came out, when I was, like, 30 years old when this came out, it just looks very odd to me. I'm not used to this kind of art. I mean, Deadpool is stretched out. 
and it's, it's just but I, I maybe I can get used to it I don't know these are um, people have fond memories for these books but these aren't worth much now uh, this is uh, this is a book you'd find in a quarter bin um, very plentiful but uh, it's worth picking up for a quarter um, it's the first appearance of a character that nobody's ever heard of um what else The Creature Commandos. Now that's a comic that's worth a lot of money. Should be. It actually isn't. Sometimes your old Uncle Gratu pulls your leg a little bit. Okay. This is uh, Tales to Astonish, number 86. That you can make yourself astronaut tough. Okay, let's uh, frame a uh, frame. Uh, get this uh, back. This is in bad shape. That's a perfectly good reading copy. See on a H.P. Lovecraft kind of guy here on the cover. I always loved this two-page spread, which was an advertisement for the 1972 cartoon Saturday morning cartoon season on uh, NBC. bunch of shows that no one remembers well the Jetsons and underdog were reruns but then the hound cats Roman holidays the Barclays which was a dog version of all in the family and the C lab 2020 would have been forgotten but they did a like a dirty version of it I think on uh, adult swim Run around, no one remembers, around the world in 80 days, talking with a giant. I think the NBC, that's a beautiful ad, but it had kind of a weak lineup that year. Because I, I wasn't watching, I was watching Saturday morning television every Saturday, but I was not tuned into NBC. Those were uh, not the shows I was watching. So CBS and ABC must have had far superior. Uh, but what I remember is how if I got up, I would get up early before the show started at seven. Uh, they would have uh, um, shows in syndication, old cartoons from the '60s, and that's when you'd see Go Go Gophers and Tennessee Tuxedo and the really good stuff was before an old Porky Pig reruns, I remember from the 30s. I'm starting to get a cramp in my knee from how I'm sitting here, so I may want to end this broadcast and come back and continue with it later, some point soon. Oh. 
there's got to be the perfect posture pedic way to do this bag and boarding and I'm not doing it right have you guys mastered this maybe you have you can give me some advice down in the comments section but um, let me um, it's 2.31. Oh, I missed 2.22. I wanted to make a big deal when it turned to be 2.22. 2.22 p.m. on... On January 22nd in 2022. Anyway, at some point during the broadcast you just watched, it was 2.22 p.m. on January 22nd in the year 2022. And the rapture didn't happen. Unbelievable. I thought it would. But maybe if I uh, go down and look at the internet, something uh, unbelievable happened right at that moment. But, you know, up here, I'm in a little bubble. I have no idea what's going on in the world. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, make sure everything's turned off in here. What the hell was the hallway? Knocked over the guitar. <clears throat> okay. Let's close the door to this room so the cats can't get in there. I did get some bagging boarding done, and that makes me feel good. I showed you this the other day. It's a hardcover version of the famous first edition reprinting the first issue of Wonder Woman. And I got this recently. It's a Hulk uh, short box with the really cool Alex Ross art on it. And then this one with the X-Men. This is where I'm going to try to move all the comic books into this room, but I'm, I'm using the other room as kind of a staging area. But using that room as the place where I organize is annoying because these weeks pass so quickly, and then all of a sudden it's Thursday night, and I realize I've got to clean up because Gerald's coming, and I've got to, it's on Friday, and I've got to put, put blow up the mattress and everything. And then I have to move all these boxes back, and so it's better to... Uh, uh, have a guest room where it's just always ready. I have determined. Um, Stray Dogs is a good book to read. It's actually a new book. Rudolph agrees. Remember our sponsor, Dr. Pepper, which is good at 10, 2, and 4, and it's also good at 2.22 p.m. on January 22nd, 2022. Yeah, Dr. Pepper is distinctively different. It's not a cola, not a root beer. It's the light and lively taste that you'll cheer, and, and Dr. Pepper funnels millions of dollars into uh, the Dr. Orloff Inspirational Network, so... Make sure you uh, give them your money. 
so that they can uh, make your ass incredibly fat. Um, that's my advice to you. You're on the Gratuarlov Inspirational Network. <sighs> Sorry. I will um, upload this episode and see if anyone cares. Uh, maybe people will watch it and comment down below. But, um, guys, uh, looks like we're all either sick or we're going to be getting sick in the next few days or weeks. It looks like that's the way, it's the way it is, to quote uh, Walter Cronkite. So, uh, take care of yourself, take your vitamins, drink your orange juice. <clears throat> And um, keep on organizing those comic books. Be seeing you.